scholars of some 2,000, 3,000 years ago realized there's a whole class of mathematical equations that can be solved by drawing a picture of a square. In fact, maybe have a picture of an incomplete square and then just completing the picture to a full square. So these equations became known as the ones that could be solved by the square method. Now the Latin word for square is quadrus. So these became the equations known as the ones that could be solved by the quadrus method. And today we call them quadratic equations. All right, so the word quad or the prefix quad in everyday language still means four, like a quadrilateral is a figure with four sides. A quadrangle is a region outside that have four angles. So quad means four, but it comes from the word quadrus, meaning equations that can be solved by the square method. Now I'm going to go through these equations. I'm going to start with various levels of equations. I've got here, you can see on the board already, level one equations all the way up to level six. So here's what a general quadratic equation looks like. But we're going to start and build our way up by using the power of area and the fact that symmetry is our friend. This is the true story of quadratic equations and it's great because once you've got the understanding, nothing to memorize. All right, so let's do it. So let's start with level one equations, the very simple quadrus equations. Namely something like what's on the board already, please solve x squared equals 100. Great. Now if I literally draw this as a geometry problem, I will have a square and I'll tell you, its area is 100 and its side length is unknown. X times X is something that gives me 100. And when you say you know the answer already, if the area is 100, you know it's going to have to be a 10 by 10 squared, just like the farmer and her fence. All right, so one answer is X is 10. But of course, now we're playing with arithmetic. We go beyond just the purely geometric answers. We'll allow another answer because there's another number in arithmetic whose square is 100, namely negative 10. So there is my answer to our very first quadrus equation, very first quadratic equation. And that's all level one is. Pretty straightforward. In fact, I can whip through some examples with you right now very quickly. For example, if I asked you uh, to please solve this quadrus equation, p squared is 49. All right, okay, I've called it p instead of x, no big deal. You'd say, oh, p must be seven, if I want the literally geometric answer, seven by seven square. Or in arithmetic, there's a second answer, the negative version, negative seven. p is seven or negative seven. Great. Um, things can be a little bit tricky. I mean, is this tricky or not? 64 x squared equals 25. There's a quadrus equation. Is that straightforward? Well, it is. You might have to do a little bit of work first, maybe divide the left side by 64 and the right side by 64, and I'm left with x squared is 25 64 ths. So something squared is 25 64 ths, and you're thinking 5 8 ths. So x must be 5 8 ths, or in arithmetic, there's another answer, negative 5 8 ths. Great! That's it to level one. Oh, well, there's a little bit of complication in level one. Let me point this out. One thing to point out. Everything we've done so far has two solutions, the positive version and arithmetic, the negative version. But here's a quadrus equation, x squared equals zero. Okay, what's squared uh, equals zero? Well, in geometry, it's not much of a square. Square's area is zero, I guess its side length is zero, so x is zero. But then you might ask, well, what about the negative version? x is zero or negative zero? Well, it turns out negative zero is the same as zero. Is that obvious? Can you explain why negative zero is the same as zero? That's a good question. But negative zero is the same as zero. So actually, this has only one solution. So all our equations before had two solutions, the one positive version and its negative counterpart, but zero, something equals zero, has only one solution, namely zero. In fact, it gets worse if I did this, x squared is negative five. And given our work about negative times negative being positive, it turns out there are no numbers whose squares are negative. So this actually has zero solutions. So it looks like at level one, equations can either have two solutions, or one solution, or it might turn out you have zero solutions. All right, that's level one. I think we've got that covered. Let's now go on to level two. All right, now up a notch in difficulty to level two. But let's do this level two problem. X plus three squared is 25. All right, all right. The thing is just to step back. Don't be so like, you know, locked into it. Think of what it's really saying. Something squared is 25. In which case is really kind of level one. Something squared is 25. So that something better be five or its negative counterpart, negative five. So my something, my x plus three is either five or my something is negative five. In which case we're golden. If I want x all by itself, let me just subtract three and I'll get that x is two or I get that x is uh, negative five take over three, x is negative eight. Beautiful. 
that's all level two is. To realize something squared is a number, really level one in disguise, with a slight complication. In fact, let's do another one. How about two x plus four squared equals four? Let's solve that quadratic equation. Well, something squared is four, so I said the word square, so I'm doing a square equation right now. So my something better be two or negative two. And what's my something? It's two x plus four, it's either two or it's negative two. Great, but I really wanted x all by itself, so let's subtract four from everything. So two x must be a negative two or negative six. Yes, you with me? And let's divide everything by two, x is negative one or negative three. Beautiful, beautiful. So that's the quadrus method. All right, level two, done. But I'd like you to just look at this one very closely. Keep it in your brain, it'll help us with level three. But before we do that, a practice problem for you. All right, now we're ready for level three. And actually, if you're not prepared for it, it is quite a shock. Here is a level three quadrus equation. Please solve x squared plus x, x, x plus 9 is 25. And if you've not seen this before, you go gulp. In fact, that's the very honest thing to do. There are two steps to solving a problem. Number one is be your honest human self and have an emotional reaction. If that looks scary, acknowledge that you're scared. Go gulp. Say I'm scared. That's what one's meant to do. Mathematics is for humans, by humans, therefore be human in encountering mathematics. And the next step is say, okay, now I've had my emotional reaction, let me do something nonetheless. So what could we possibly do here? I mean, the thing is, it looks totally different from level one and level two. Totally different. Except, except, level one had x squared in it, and there is an x squared in here. In fact, I could draw a square, at least for that part of it. x squared must come from x times x. All right, all right, so I, make, I can make sense of that part of the equation. But the part that's scary is the rest of this. So I've got one area for x squared, so I need more area to add to this equation. Oh, but look at 6x. That's x by 6. I've already got height x. I could actually add more to this picture and do a 6 here. A 6 here, so that'll be area 6x. So I'm starting to add more area to my picture. But now, here's my piece of advice. Symmetry is our friend. Remember, symmetry is our friend. What I'm drawing now is looking pretty unsymmetrical. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll add this extra area, but I'll do it in a symmetrical way. I'll put half the area here, but then I put the other half bounced down here. So let's make it just 3x of area, 3x of area, and 3x of area down here. Do you see what I'm doing now? Do you see it's starting to look like a square? All right, but I can even tell you the dimensions because this is x, uh, something by x makes 3x, this would be 3, yep, 3 times x is 3x, uh, x by 3, 3 times x is 3x, and now it seems completely, completely compelling to complete the square, literally fill in the extra piece. Now what I've got here, so I've got x squared, yes, 3x and 3x makes that area, and look at this extra piece, it's magical. 3 by 3 gives me 9, which is precisely the next area, extra piece of area I wanted. Isn't that gorgeous? We literally completed the square and we realize all this, this x squared, the 6x and this 9, is itself a square. In fact, it's an x plus 3 by x plus 3 as a square. It's really x plus 3 as a square. That's what this picture is. That's what all this is. And it must have area 25. And look, it's back to being level 2. This was really a level 2 problem in disguise. In fact, it's the one we did earlier. Something squared is 25. My something is either 5 or negative 5. Take away 3. That means x is either 2 or negative uh, 8. Beautiful. Beautiful. So that's the trick of level three, to realize it's really a level two question in disguise. And you can figure it out by completing the square. Literally draw the square. So let's do another example. Uh, let me clean the board. I'll be right back and we'll do another example. Okay, here's another level three problem. X squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 17. All right, we'll do the same thing. Let's see if this is just a level two in disguise. Now, I know I'm gonna do a whole square, so I'm also draw the whole thing now, with one corner being the x squared piece from x times x. Now, I'm not gonna worry about geometry being literal. I can, you know, I'm gonna have negative area here, but I'll have negative four x and negative four x if I keep it symmetrical. 
because I know my diagrams are still speaking truth in algebra. That's the point we're playing here. So, area negative 4x, area negative 4x, yes, got the x squared, got the negative 8x. Something times x makes negative 4x, must be negative 4, negative 4, in which case that final piece I want must be this piece, which is negative 4 by negative 4, 16. Okay, the geometry is strange, but look, it's all hanging together. It's got nice arithmetic truth. In fact, it's now telling me that all this stuff, all this stuff is actually x minus 4, x minus 4 as a square. So x minus 4 as a square must have area 17. All right, some numbers don't have nice square roots. The square root of 17 is awkward. It's just over the square root of 16, so it's like 4.1 or something. Anyhow, anyhow, but at least just write something squared is 17, so my something must be the square root of 17, or it must be the negative version, the negative the square root of 17. In which case, I'm going to add 4 to everything. I get that x must be root 17 plus 4, or negative root 17 plus 4. <sighs> okay, awkward, but the, in, the, in principle, the idea is just the same. Uh, by the way, um, some people get fussy. I wrote root 17 plus 4 and negative root 17 plus 4. Some people insist on writing the integers first and the square roots next. They might want to write x is actually 4 plus root 17 or 4 minus root 17. It's just a style thing. Whatever you want to do is great. All correct mathematics, lo and behold, is actually correct. So at this point, it's just style. All right, so even if the numbers are awkward, the idea is beautiful. And I think we're now ready for level four. This is grand.